MKSS Pune, please ask your question. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, please open the uh, topic number 5, slide 19. Uh, if we resolve this algebraic equation, actually the uh, uh, peclet number is coming is rho u delta x uh, by gamma. And uh, where these two terms coming? Because uh, if you resolve this, it is 1 minus peclet number, it is coming. I am not getting exactly uh, how this two value comes there. P by 2. What you are saying is that 1 minus peclet number in curly brackets divided by 2, that is what you are getting? Whether you mean that this should be 1 minus peclet number? Ah, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Because that is what I could understand. 1 minus peclet number, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. that whole should be divided by 2, not peclet number divided by 2, correct? That is correct. No, no, no. The, uh, 2 should not be there. No. It is only yeah, yeah, yeah. P 1 okay. minus peclet number. Actually, I can understand that 2 gamma. I had taken as a coefficient a i, so 2 gamma I had already taken a c here. So, I can understand what you are saying is that when you take gamma outside, it becomes 1 minus rho u delta x divided by gamma. So, there should be no 2 term here. here. That is what you are saying, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah, you are right here. There is a mistake here. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. you are right. Thank you. Any other question? Uh, actually, accordingly the conditions uh, will be changed now because uh, in slide uh, topic number 5, slide 21, the condition should be if the peclet number is greater than 1. It should be like that? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, let me put it in the whiteboard and then show you. Let me do one thing, I will come back to this in tomorrow's lecture. Uh, I think there is some mistake in this slide, I will work on it and get back to you tomorrow morning. Just give me some time. Right now I could see that uh, there is some issue, but I will definitely get back to you. Uh, you are right that uh, this should be peclet number divided by 2 because when only the condition is correct, but there is something wrong in this expression. This condition is correct. There is nothing wrong in this condition. It is just that in this expression, there is some issue. I will resolve it and come back to you. Thank you. Okay, sir. And what is gamma in this equation? It is uh, only uh, k, k or k by Cp. Uh, gamma. Cp on the left hand side. Yeah, yeah. You are right. Gamma it will be, if it is a heat transfer problem, it will be k divided by Cp. And Momentum by it should be a mu. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. STNIT Surat. Yes, sir. Good evening. My question is about topic number 5, slide number 34. That is in pseudo code, uh, second line is that for j equal to 2, j max minus 1. And for i equal to 1, i max minus 1 in heat flux in x direction. My question is why why we are not calculating heat flux at i max? We are doing until i max minus one only. Yeah. But why we are not calculating at i max? The question is in the pseudo code, this maximum value in the loop is always j max minus one, i max minus one for the heat flux in the x direction as well as in the y direction. The question is why we are not having the i max j max value. For that, let us go to the previous slide. Now, the convention which we are following here, the running indices for this corresponds to this running indices. The running indices for this corresponds to the running index of this. So, the last green square in the horizontal direction is this one and the running indices of this green square corresponds to the running indices of this yellow circle and the running indices of this yellow circle is i max minus 1. 
the running indices of this yellow circle is i max. Okay, so, the last green square is referred by this running indices which is i max minus 1. Okay. Now, let me tell you here the loop starts with let us say this is i is equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Whereas, for yellow circle the running indices is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So, in the x direction there is difference of 1, there are 6 green square, 7 yellow circles. So, in the next slide you can see for the green square it is 1 to i max minus 1, 1 to 7 minus 1 which is 6 green squares. Similarly, when you go to the red inverted triangles where we calculate heat flux in the y direction, you can see that this is first one, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. It is just that the number of face centers are one less than the number of total nodes. We have five interior node, two boundary node. So, total seven nodes. So, for this last cell at the top, the last red inverted triangle, this is running indices for this corresponds to this which is j max minus 1. So, that is the reason that it goes from 1 to j max minus 1. Thank you. I have a question in topic number 6, slide number 37. Here in first, uh, first level and second level approximation, it is mentioned that they are second order approximation. How we can decide again based on Taylor series expansion or? Yeah, so the question first, let me repeat the question. The surface averaging, volume averaging or linear interpolations which we do, I had already, I had always mentioned that they are second order accurate. But if you want to uh, show the order of accuracy, that comes in the numerical analysis and for that you can show it through a Taylor series expansion. Maybe I will put in the Moodle uh, this analysis part where it shows that this is indeed a second order accurate. Okay, I have one more question related to practical application. Suppose we uh, uh, carry out simulation of slurry flow say in pump and we want to study the effect of slurry on the impeller blades. Okay, it, may, it may lead to erosion of the blade. So, it is related to flow analysis as well as some would say force or stress analysis also. So, how we can solve uh, such problem? The question is uh, different from what has been taught here. The question is on a practical application uh, that is a slurry pump where you have fluid as well as uh, solid particles. So, this is what you can call as a granular flow um, and it is a the number of particles are much less as compared to the fluid. So, this is called as a dilute flows. So, the question is how to solve this problems in uh, uh, using CFD. Uh, as far as I know uh, the solid particles in this case are solved by Langranian approach and the fluid flow is solved by an Eilerian approach and there is a coupling between the two and uh, that much I know about this problem. Although I can tell you that as far as the accuracy of the CFD solutions are concerned, as I say that uh, there are lot of problem challenging problems where CFD can give you solution, but the level of accuracy may be not that high. So, because in this case there are lot of modeling issues and the solutions which you get from CFD may not be that much accurate as compared to the other let us say single phase flow. This is a multi phase flow problem. Professor Puranik will add to it. Uh, yeah, I think you were referring to the effect of slurry on uh, the impeller blade um, and how the, the blade will be affected. So, that actually will become what will be called as a fluid structure interaction uh, problem. And uh, in this particular case, it's going to be actually very complicated because the fluid is, as uh, as as you mentioned, it's a slurry. So it's not a single phase fluid, but it's a multi-component uh, situation where you have a fluid flow and also the solid particles. Um, this uh, this this will require a fluid uh, structure uh, interaction type analysis, but we are unfortunately not really um, exposed to such kinds of applications, and. Uh, 
I don't think we can really provide any uh, definitive answer on that. Uh, I think you may have to refer to some specialized uh, fluid structure interaction related uh, papers for specifically that problem that you were referring to, which is effect of the particles on, um, on the impeller blades and how erosion of the impeller blades may occur in this situation. So yeah, I, I think, sorry, we, we don't have the expertise to, to comment on that. Mufakkam, Jha College. Yes, it is uh, about the computational strength. Uh, that is when we are going to next step, uh, and Professor Sarmaya did explain it uh, reasonably well, that I want uh, to listen to that again. Uh, in the explicit scheme, he has uh, explained it. So the question is on the computational stencil, uh, the uh, explanation of the computational stencil again, okay, uh, in a one dimensional situation, let me start with the computational stencil in a one dimensional situation which is much easier to follow. So in this case, the computational stencil is such, so let us suppose this is a one dimensional conduction problem. So the computational stencil is such that. Uh, when you want to calculate the, let me go back to the algebraic equation, I think that is a better, this, this slide is better to explain the computational stencil. Actually what happens is that when you convert from the conservation law or the governing equation to algebraic equation, finally you end up with a linear algebraic equation. So this is the linear algebraic equations which we get from an explicit method. This is an this is an algebraic equation which we get from explicit method. This is an algebraic equation which we get from implicit method. Now, the, if you look into the nature of the algebraic equation, this equation is for a particular grade point and actually this equation, set of equation is applicable for the number of circles, let us say in this figures, number of yellow circles which are interior grade points. So, there are 9 yellow circles. So, this equations, there are 9 such equations. So, this is right now expressed in a generic form where P represents a representative control volume, capital E represent the east neighbor of that representative control volume, capital W represent west neighbor, capital N represent north neighbor and capital S represents the south neighbor. Okay, so, these are the neighboring temperatures which are in an explicit method of previous time level. However, on the right hand side, although it, you, you will not see temperature at point node P, because temp, this constant B, which I shown as a constant right now, actually this consists of temperature at P or at of previous time level. So, what is mean by a computational stencil in an explicit method is, by looking into this algebraic equation, let us suppose if, as I said that this equ equation is applicable to 9 yellow circles shown here. So, right now this stencil is shown for this yellow circle, where this is the representative node P at time n plus 1 and the way we have this algebraic equation, this is a function of temperature at same point of previous time level, which is comes in this constant B and the 4 neighboring values for of the previous time level, which is east neighbor, west neighbor, north neighbor and south neighbor. So, this is a computational stencil for this point. Similarly, when point moves that moves here, then the neighbors change. So, that we had shown you an animation where this computational stencil moves point by point 9 times, because in a computational we have to apply this equation 9 times. We get 9 equations where in each equation there is only one unknown. So, the you can see that thing in the computational stencil only that an in a new time level there is only one grid point value, whereas there are free five grid point values from the previous time step. This is, so the pictorial representation or let us say an animation of the way this algebraic equation one by one scrolls through all the nine points is what is shown through this animation. When you go to the implicit method, you get an algebraic equation where temperature at a particular point of the next time level is a function of its four neighbors and this B constant consist of temperature of the same grid point from previous time level. So, that is why now the this figure stencil almost reverses in this case and in the new time level you have 5 neighboring values, 4 neighbors and the node value 
and one value from the previous time step. So, this is what we call as computational stencil which is a pictorial representative of a representative algebraic equations. Thank you for attention. Thank you.